We're doing a series of vlogs looking at where we're at and where we're going after three years of off-grid permaculture homesteading. All right, so the topic we want to tackle today is the fruit production. Um, my wife calls it fruit production when she says that she includes berries in that. So fruits and berries. It includes uh, berry bushes, grapevines, uh, fruit trees, nut trees. There we go. Is that it? <laughs> yeah, that's what it includes. Great. So it's not just fruit production, but it's um, nuts and berries as well. And vines. And vines. I don't know if you can recognize where we're at here. We're in the mini orchard. That's the memorial tree <clears throat> planted in memory of my mom. And this is the rest of it. If you remember, this area was just crazy jungly. But we came in here and chopped all the grass in here and all the weeds and then dropped it at the base of the fruit trees. Now this cherry tree here, Joshi got a cherry off of it and ate it. He said it was great. This is That's the first piece of fruit off of any of our trees that we've gotten to eat. We've got <clears throat> lots of berries, but first piece of fruit. Now these were the trees that bloomed really well. This is a, a plum here that bloomed really well, but it's not going to produce anything. This is the cherry that also bloomed really well, but it's not going to produce anything. So we need to figure out if we need to amend them, um, add fertilizer, whatever we need to do. <clears throat> but doing the chop and drop <clears throat> is a great start. With all this all this mulch now that's going to be breaking down for these trees. <clears throat> and we did this tree up. It's a, it was a baby. <clears throat> So we're giving that one a great opportunity and this one as well. We got it all fixed up and protected. So it's going to have great opportunity. This is a hazelnut tree. Or really a bush. Um, now you know what? We did get a hazelnut off of this last year. And it looks like it's going to give us more this year. So that's really cool. And then that's the memorial tree we put in last week. So that's what we're going to be focusing on today. So now this area is workable. So to this point we've put in 30 uh, trees and at least 50 uh, bushes and vines. So 30 fruit trees, through, fruit and nut trees, because there's a, a couple nut trees in there. So 30 of those and then at least 50 vines which are you know grapes um, things like that and bushes very bushes very bushes so a really important point to understand when you are wanting to produce your own fruit nuts particularly fruits and nuts uh, is that it is a process that you have to pay it forward you have to have patience uh, three years into it and we put these trees in is like one of the first things we did and we've gotten all of one cherry one cherry <laughs> one cluster of grapes that wasn't fully ripe but we just picked it anyways because they started going bad and like three hazelnuts and that's it this this year was the first year we saw them budding so that was really cool we know that they're not broken but we only got one cherry off of that. All the apples didn't make it, the plums didn't make it, and the rest of the peaches, didn't. peaches didn't make it. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to have patience and uh, the ability to wait to be able to harvest when you're doing fruit trees uh, and vines of all kinds. The berries have been fruitful. We've already had quite a few blackberries, raspberries, strawberries, though they aren't technically in the bush berry category. But, uh, yeah. The berries are definitely for the microwave generation. You're going to get yeah. satisfaction way sooner with the berries. So that's cool. You can enjoy your berries. Um, second year in, you will get berries. In abundance. In abundance, yeah. So that's really cool. Look at these blackberries that are growing on here. I mean, it is just growing everywhere. 
we are going to have a lot of blackberries. The thornless variety. Let's look at these. But look what we have to deal with in order to be able to harvest. Look at these grasses and weeds. Oh, look at this one. This big, <clears throat> big one for a new cane. Look how thick that is at the base. And so same with the second row. We've got all kinds of blackberries popping up in this thing. It's be off. But look what we have to deal with again, guys. Yes. So we gotta get in here and I mean this 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 one is just bursting with life. It is fantastic. So that's the before and when we get some work done on here, I'll show you the after. And hopefully there's gonna be a huge difference. <laughs> That's the goal anyways, for there to be a huge difference. Me and the boys will come out here and work on this and see if we can get this cleared out to make it uh, more pleasurable to harvest from these. That one is done. <clears throat> it done? It's gotta turn black. It's not quite ripe yet. But they're getting there, huh? They're getting there. Are you looking forward to that being ripe so you can eat them? Yeah. Yeah. All right, here's the after. Now we'll be able to get in and harvest this. Now it'll be fun to harvest from here. All right, something else I want to show you fruit production wise. This is also something exciting to us. Um, might probably seems trivial to a lot of some, to some people, but when you've been growing your grapes for three years and it looks like they're going to produce a harvest. Daddy. Daddy, where is the white Look at that. Water? There, there, just all over, some big ones here, so hopefully this year we'll get some grapes. So what are our greatest lessons learned so far? Definitely lesson number one, do not put birds in with your orchards that are new. If they're mature, you can put them in there. They're not going to have a huge impact on your mature trees. But when they are new, baby trees, uh, baby bushes, things like that, do not put birds in there. Geese will eat them, ducks will peck on them, chickens will dig things up. And what's weird is that the geese and ducks will nibble on the trees just like out of boredom. Right? I mean, right. Like they're not eating it, they're just, they're just bored and they just, fun. just peck at it. <laughs> so that's a pretty big lesson learned. What was another lesson we learned? Uh, to plant more than you think you're going to need and varieties that do well in your area. Yes. Find native species and then maybe you won't buy the actual native species but find similar species. So like here um, some native plums do really well here. So plant plums. Um, cherry trees there's native cherry trees do really well here so find a uh, cherry trees plum trees that are right for your growing zone and plant those um, what else well blackberries but we bought the thornless variety and so they do awesome here and there's no thorns to deal with and it's great yeah they are prolific here it is fantastic all right now another thing is to keep really good records uh, we've had a hard time doing that just logistically but when you lose a tree and plant a new tree, make sure you, you record that and keep track of what, what trees are self-pollinating and which ones need a pollinator. Uh, just keep good records. It'll help you out in the long run. And the next big item that we, I think, have just experimented with and kind of learned some things is 
in the area of guilds in permaculture you hear the topic of guilds a lot it's just the idea of planting a bunch of different plants together that do well together and help support each other like the three sisters mm -hmm. and we found that it's it's good to just simplify that diversity is good but it takes a lot of maintenance so we've simplified things down to every fruit tree we want to have a comfrey and we want to have some kind of bulbs around the trunk because that helps keep the underground critters from eating up the root system when they're young and we also want to have um, some kind of cover if it's flat ground then wood chips is great if it's on a swale or a mound then we plant low to the ground cover and then a support species is great if you can if you can do that so some sort of nitrogen fixing support species yeah and if you can't do the support species then the comfrey will do Yep. If you grow comfrey next to your fruit trees, nut trees, you're growing your mulch in place. Yep. Um, as well as a little bit of fertilizer that that will create, you know, the mulch breaks down and fertilizes. And comfrey draws up nutrients from down deep into the soil around your fruit trees or berry bushes. So, so comfrey's great we next love, to we every love tree. love comfrey. <laughs> yeah. Okay, back to lessons learned. We were just talking about another one, and that's strawberries. We love strawberries. And like um, Opco Doug and Stacy, I said that they also love strawberries, but they just found them to be too high maintenance, and that's our situation as well. They just are too high maintenance. We even tried to use them as ground cover, and along with other things as ground cover, but they just didn't work. The weeds were just too invasive, and uh, so we ended up being so many weeds, trying to dig through the weeds to harvest the strawberries. So that's just not going to work. Right. So what we're thinking about is one raised bed and dedicated to strawberries. So solid strawberries, wood chips, raised bed, and that's it. So that's how hopefully we can produce a good amount of strawberries. Okay, so we've got our permaculture design for our front five acres to show you kind of what we want to do in the future for fruit production. So we have our driveway coming in here and we want to put some uh, maples but also chestnut along here and maybe along some various uh, strategic places for shade out in our pasture. And then this over here is gonna be our second big swale that we're gonna hopefully build a big pond system and swale and we'd like to put some uh, more chestnut and maple and then possibly some more wild plum and or jujube, which we haven't tried yet. We'd like to try some ju jujube out there. Doesn't she make a vlog look good, guys? <laughs> My pretty wife. It's gonna make me turn red. <laughs> okay, uh, to summarize the food production, fruit, nuts, berries production. What is it? Be patient, just keep going, and eventually our hope is we'll see fruit. <laughs> yes, indeed. And if you want more specifics, we're gonna put a bunch of info in the description. What are we gonna put in there? We'll leave a list of all the lessons that we learned uh, down in the description below. So please remember you guys to like, subscribe, and share, and please leave comments. Um, all these things help us, and for those of you that don't know about YouTube, please do sit through 30 seconds of the ads. That's how we get credit for that. Um, kind of hate to even mention that, but that's just how it is. Now, if there's an ad that's objectionable, please put a comment in and let us know. We don't want any objectionable ads on our... We're, we're trying very hard to get rid of all the objectionable ads. And, um... That's about it. Yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Look at this frog. You know, hardy kiwi. Bye.